Welcome reptilians, welcome, welcome back to my channel. I am super excited today because well, a few things. Number one, I am going to be converting Goliath's tank into a bioactive tank, finally. <laughs> Number two, I am working with iHeartGeckos again. If you remember a few months back, I did a video of their brand new flat ship tanks, and today they have sent me a conversion kit, and we are gonna use that in Goliath's tank. Now, what this does is it allows you to repurpose old tanks that you have sitting around, and if you guys know me, you know that I save everything, and if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I used to have a 29 gallon tank before I upgraded to a 55 gallon fish tank and that tank has been sitting in my shed for over a year now which is crazy and I didn't know what to do with it so we are actually going to convert that into Goliath's new tank I get questions all the time about how you can go about converting your aquarium into a crested gecko tank and this conversion kit allows you to do that and if you don't want to spend the money for a new full setup for your animal this allows you to just convert an old tank into it for a lot cheaper. So we're gonna take a look at how that holds up in this tank. So very first thing, I'm gonna install that conversion kit. For a detailed video of how to install it and measuring for it and all that, I will put a link to it right here in the info card and in the description below, I will put a link for it. But very quickly, I'm just laying down some painter's tape so when I silicone it in, I'll get some smooth, clean lines. I'm using aquarium safe silicone to silicone that in. And then we just wanna make sure that it airs out properly. Never use silicone and just stick your animal in there. You need to let it air out for at least 24 to 48 hours. And as always, anything that I use in this video will be linked in my description below. And once the tank is aired out and the silicone is all dry, we can start filling up this tank. I am pretty new to the whole bioactive world, so I wanted to try out something new with this tank. Dexter, my Crested Gecko's tank, is holding up very well, but I just kind of wanted to explore my options. And if it fails, that's okay. I've done a lot of research, and I just wanted to explore different ways of doing this and see which way that I personally liked best. So for this route, we're gonna go ahead and use pea gravel as the false bottom instead of buying a commercial false bottom. And we're gonna use that just to aerate that soil and make sure that the plants aren't sitting in sopping wet soil. And to separate the substrate from the drainage layer, I am just using a piece of weed block that I cut out and we're just gonna place that right over. You wanna cut it a little bit bigger than the actual drainage layer so that way it forms kind of a little basket for the substrate. And onto the substrate, this is where a little bit more of that experimentation comes into play. I am making my own substrate and it's gonna be a mixture of a lot of different things. So first of all, it's gonna be plantation soil or eco earth. I'm just adding a full brick of this to a bucket of water that I have treated with RepiSafe and I'm also going to add some forest moss to this as well. This is actually a two pack of forest moss and I'm going to take one of those bricks out and break it in half because the actual soil base that I'm going to be using already has moss in it. And then we just let that expand. I always end up adding more water because I never measure my water out and it's never enough, but I always end up adding more and kind of helping it out and breaking it up some as we go so that it'll expand faster because I'm impatient. And this time I decided to use gardening gloves because I kind of got tired of picking dirt out from under my fingernails. And once that's all done, I'm just going to go ahead and start mixing that all up evenly. And then I'm just going to add some cypress mulch to help with the water content of the mixture. And I'm also going to add charcoal. And this is to help with smells and it also springtails love charcoal. So we're going to add that in there as well. And this is going to be bioactive. So we need some kind of soil component. I am using an organic topsoil. And when I was researching, I found that it is very, very important to make sure that your topsoil or whatever kind of soil you use doesn't have any kind of perlite, vermiculite, or any kind of manure in it because all those can be harmful for your animal. I looked into multiple potting soils and soil mixes and all of them contained all of those things. And the only thing that I was able to find that didn't contain those things was this topsoil. And then we're just gonna mix all this together too. If you notice, it was very difficult for me to mix together because I made way too much and used way too small of a bucket. And this is the finished consistency of our soil. And of course, next we start putting it into the tank. The awesome thing about this conversion kit is that it has a very tall lip on the bottom. So it allows you to put all of your drainage layer and substrate and everything under those ventilation holes without any kind of issue. I am making the bottom layer of this pretty thick so that the plants will have plenty of room to root. And my husband is doing all the hardscaping on this tank because he had been playing around with it for a little while and he came up with an awesome design. So I'll just let him 
carry that design out because it looks super cool and I definitely didn't want to mess that up. We are just using driftwood that we found at a local river here and some sandblasted wood. I'm not really sure what exactly kind of wood that is. It came from a Repticon, but that is all the elements of the hardscape. And then it's time to plant the plants. All of our plants this time came from our local nursery. We did ask and they don't use any kind of pesticides, but we did go ahead and clean the roots of these plants off to get any kinds of fertilizers that they might've been using off of them because we don't wanna put that into the tank. First up is this ivy. So the guy at the nursery said that this one would be good in a humid environment. We explained to him what we were building and he said it'd be fine, but it might overtake the tank. But that's kind of what we are looking for. We're wanting it to look overgrown. But I will say that after he said it was okay, I came home and researched because I'm paranoid and I just wanted to make sure. And this ivy is fine for animals, but it can be harmful for feeder insects. So if you feed your animal feeder insects, I highly would advise it against putting this into the tank but Goliath doesn't eat feeder insects the only thing I've ever gotten him to eat was two wax worms in the entire year that I've had him so of course if he does start to eat insects then I will remove this and we'll redo his whole tank anyway but as for right now this will be fine in his tank and then next we're just adding some pothos it looks like a lot but all this actually came from a single potted plant and I just kind of separated the roots and everything when I was cleaning the fertilizers off and we're just going to plant that throughout the tank. And now I'm just taking some pure plantation soil and covering up all that soil mixture because it does have charcoal and things like that in it. And I don't want him to accidentally ingest anything like that. So I'm just making sure to cover all that up so he will never come in contact with it. And then springtails. This is our cleanup crew for this bioactive tank. I forgot to get isopods when I was at the Repticon. I've been to three of them recently and I didn't get isopods at a single one of those. So I'm going to have to get some isopods pods now too but these are springtails that I'm adding in now. I've had multiple people ask me if I've ever had my springtails escape and the answer to that is not that I'm aware of. These guys do need a moist humid environment to survive so even if they did escape into your house they wouldn't last long. And then I'm just sprinkling some of this spring to life by Josh's frogs in there just to kind of help them kickstart their colony. Now for a layer of forest moss. This is just going to help retain humidity in this tank for the gargoyle gecko as they are a high humidity humidity species. And this is what we've got so far. Next, we're just gonna add a layer of leaf litter over all of this, which also came from joshesfrogs.com. And this is just a means for hiding for the cleanup crew. And also these leaves will break down and give something else to the cleanup crew to eat. And this is what we are working with so far. And of course, we can't forget the feeding ledge and the cork bark. Goliath spends so much time in that cork bark, so we had to make sure to get that in there as well. And then it's just time to add in the gecko. Interesting story about Goliath. They weren't sure whether or not she was a female or male when I got her. So I went with the name Goliath, just knowing that she was going to be a male. And now that she has grown quite a bit, she is definitely a she. So I'm not sure what to call her. I don't know if I'm going to stick with the name Goliath. Is Anna Louise suggested Gigi or G or if I want to call her Demona, which is the female gargoyle from the TV show Gargoyles. But yeah, just let me know what you guys think. And I did go ahead and add some fake plants to the top just to add a little bit more cover until my ivy and everything grows out. And I also put a grow light on top of this, which is actually a UVB grow light. And it's kind of just jankily up there with a light stand that's sitting on top because this tank is so tall that the light stand doesn't reach all the way. So we'll have to find out a better system for that. But right now it's just kind of up there. But yeah, everything is hopefully looking okay. Like I said, I highly would suggest against doing exactly what I did unless you know it's going to work because this was just kind of my experiment and one of my favorite things about having reptiles is being able to design these tanks so if this doesn't work out I'll just start over and that's it guys it is as simple as that you literally just measure it and order the size and silicone it in and you are good to go I know I said it during the setup but I just wanted to reiterate I 
hope that this bioactive setup works. I've never done it quite this way before, so we shall see. But please don't take this as this is how you do this bioactive setup. It's just kind of my little experiment and just testing things and seeing how they work out in the end. Thank you so much again to iHeartGecko's Goliath is already absolutely loving her new tank. And just like last time, guys, I'm not getting paid to say any of this. I just love this company and I love their products. So I just wanted to bring those things to you guys. And speaking of repurposing things, very soon I will be showing the process of repurposing an old jewelry cabinet into a new tank which is what we have been working on quite a bit. And that is almost done. We're almost there guys. But make sure that you are following me on Instagram and Twitter. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications every time I put out a new video, which is Wednesdays and Sundays. Thank you so much to Reptile Rescue 34 and Showstopper Twin for following me on Instagram, going through and like a whole bunch of stuff. You guys are the bees knees. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye.